Welcome to my tea channel. Today, we are going to continue with our aim, which is agenda read one. But today, we are doing science. We are going to look at science. Like we coded our math, here we are going to have our first science question. It will be a series. And we are going to solve questions under this, like we are doing for the math. We are going to name them as part one, part two, part three, until we finish solving the question. Like we said for math, when you listen to these things, when you listen, it's going to help you to pass this year's science BEC as well as the math BEC. You don't want to waste much time, we'll go into it. But before you know what we are supposed to do, you are supposed to get to the website and download the question so you can follow. Once you download the question, you come to the YouTube and you follow us here as we solve the questions. Pay keen attention to all that we give you so that you can be able to write the paper and pass your science this year. The, this year's agenda is to get what? Grade one in the science. So no waste much time. We'll go into the solving of the question. So like I said, we have FS, that's first science question. And we are going to start with that. Good. When it comes to science question, always we have it in parts. The practical aspect of the question is very, very important for you to understand. Once you're able to get your particles, the rest you'll be able to go through. So we are going to look at the practical first of all, how we solve some of the practicals. Good. Now, if you have your question now, I hope you've downloaded it by now. And you see, we have question one. Question one says, question one A. And there's one thing I want to take note of, you to take note of. When it comes to science, your numbering of the question is very, very important. Examiners say that most of you know, but the way you number your questions, you get wrong. So today we are going to look at proper numbering of the questions so that when we solve them, we write the correct answer, we can get what? We can get our marks. Okay, so let's go straight into it. We have question 1A. Question 1A. So today we are solving the question 1A. So in my answer booklet, I have question 1A. We have question 1AI. So how to solve question 1AI. And let me read a question. In an experiment, the surface of three iron mills were clean dried and placed in three separate test tubes A, B, and C, as shown in the diagram. Now, this is what I like about the practical. Study the diagram carefully and answer the questions that do work, that follow. Study the diagram. Most of you don't study the diagram. In the sense that, yes, during your practice days, you have seen an example of this. So you think that is no, they might have twisted something. So you have to study carefully. And they always tell you, study the diagram carefully. So I'm also stressing on that. Always study the diagram more carefully so that you don't make any mistakes. They might change it. But once you study carefully, you understand the principle behind what you are doing, you get this thing correct. Let's go. Now, when you see the practical there, it's about rusting. You can say there's a rusting. And this is what I tell students before we even go and answer the questions. When we come to particle experiments like rusting, photosynthesis, and the rest, what they want to test is your understanding of the conditions necessary for rusting to occur. Now, this is what we are doing here. We want to test the conditions necessary for rusting to occur. And for rusting to occur, there are two things. For rusting to occur, for rusting to occur, there is one air, the presence of air or, or moisture, then also two, water. When these two things are present, when these two things, water and air is present on the metal surface, the metal rust, it forms a reddish brown color, that's rusting. So in an experiment, for us to demonstrate if true, these conditions are necessary, what do you think we'll do? We are going to vary the conditions in each of our test tubes that we showed. They'll vary the condition in the sense that in one test tube, we will have only air. In another test tube, we will have only water. In the other test tube, we will have both air and water. And that is what you should take note of. Maybe in your learning in school, your diagram A was the one we thought with the water, then diagram B was that. But if you study carefully, you realize they might have changed it. So I don't go and answer anything you just learned. But you use the understanding to do it. So what I'm trying to say here is that in any practical question, they will vary the what the conditions. So it might be that in test tube A, we have only we have only air in test tube A. In test tube B, we have both air and water. So both air 
and water will be given in the test tube B. Then in test tube C, we have what? This only so this is only water. Now the next thing you are going to look at, what are they going to do? What are we doing to make sure we have only air in this one? What are we doing to make sure we have only water, such that there is no air in this? These are some of the things, these are some of the questions we'll be asking. Explain why this was. So we do certain things in the experiment to make sure that this one is only what air and that there's no water. And we also make sure that this one will have what? Only water. So what are some of the things that is done to ensure that we only have water here and we only have what? Air there. And of course, you can tell that since these and these are the two components or the factors necessary for rusting to occur, and we don't have it here, then automatically in test tube A, it will not rust. Then they will not rust. But in test tube B, it will rust. But in test tube C, it's also what? It's also rust. But the question is, what, is, what did they do? What did they put in place to make sure this is air only? To make sure that is water only? That's what we are going to look at. You understand? So here they can put a drying agent like uh, calcium chloride to absorb the air from the water. Here, they, we first of all, we boil the water to escape or to remove the oxygen. Then in this one, we also add oil to the surface of the wall of the water to prevent once again air from more from entering. So pretty clear that is how the experiment is about. Well, that's what the experiment is about. So when you get such experiment, don't rush into it. Study it carefully like they say, and let's answer the questions. So with this, let's go straight away into the question one and answer question one. Let's go straight away into question one and answer. So I read the question again. In an experiment, the surface of three iron nails were cleaned dry and placed in three separate test tubes, A, B, and C, as shown in the diagram. Now study the diagram carefully and answer the question that do or that follow. Now let's go and study the diagram carefully. If you look at diagram A or test tube A, we can see that we have air, we have water and we have rusted nail. That should tell you that all the conditions present. You see, but this one was put in test tube A. So if this is what my child taught me and I go just with this, I get wrong because they have three steps. They've changed the diagram. That's why they are telling you to study it. It might be that in this year, when they repeat this, they are going to place a different or they are going to place the test tube A at the position of test tube C. So you check it carefully. Good. So in A, we say we have what? We have air, water and rusted nail. And you could see that in test tube B, we have what? We have oil, boiled water, and boiled water. There's a reason for boiling the water. And that tells us that there won't be any more air. Then you come to test tube C, and in test tube C, we have dry air. That means we have only air without any moisture. You know, there's moisture in air. If you look at the components of air, we have oxygen, we have nitrogen, we have uh, carbon dioxide, rare gases, and at times water vapor moisture. But once we add calcium chloride, it absorbs what, the moisture and the air becomes what, dry. That means there's no water, there's no air. Good. Now let's see the observation. So that's the that one we study carefully. We've looked at it carefully. Now, after three days, the nail A or the nail in A was found to have rusted. Wow. Wow, the nail in test to B and C did not rust. Now, if I understand right, that should tell me that in test to B and C, one of the conditions was missing. If that condition is missing, then the um, rusting will not be achieved. Then they will not, will not rust. Now, straight out into the question. Now that we've studied carefully, let's go. If the question says this. 1AI. Suggest an, an aim. Should we suggest an aim for the experiment? Suggest an aim for the experiment. What is the aim? Why are we doing this? The aim of the experiment is to demonstrate the factors necessary for rust or necessary for rusting. So the aim of the experiment, that's right. Aim of the experiment, aim to demonstrate, to demonstrate the conditions, the conditions necessary for rusting. The conditions necessary for what? For rusting. That is I. What is I? Now, I, I says that why was the water in test to be boiled? So, once again, 1A, I, I. Why did we boil the water in test to A? To remove what? To remove what? I just said it. To remove what? To remove the air there. The air in what? Water. So, the reason why it was boiled is to remove Air in the 
water. Very simple and, and short answers. Point you don't write much. You just point, point, point you do. It's some, some short explanation you are gone. Then I, I, I. I, I, I. I, I state that. State the function of the oil on top of the water in test you be. What is the role of the oil? The role of the oil is to prevent air from what? From entering into the water. So the role of the oil is to prevent air from getting into the water. So this is it, to prevent air from getting into the water. Then still one A I V one A I V. What is the purpose of calcium chloride in the test tube C? What is calcium chloride doing? If you study a diary, you say that is dry air. If you don't know, you look at dry air. Dry air means that there's no water. So if you know the principle behind the experiment, no matter how they twist it, you're going to answer. Good. So the the what the purpose of the calcium chloride in the test tube to to absorb the moisture in the air or you can say to remove what to remove water in the air so that is the function of the calcium chloride in test you see why did the nail in test a rust why did the nail in test a right rust we've already said that the condition is that means that the condition is necessary for rusting to occur both conditions were fulfilled were present in what in the test tube A. So for V, why? Why did the nail in test tube A rust? He said the nail rusted. The nail rusted due to the the presence of air and water the new rusted due to the presence of what of air and what and water that is why to rust now let's go so now we have question v i v i alpha v i alpha alpha is a radiative particle and they will go into that one too now why did the new in test tube B rust or did not rust. Why did the nail in the test tube B did not rust? What do you think? The test tube B, when you go there, you cannot see what you can't see um air, therefore it will not work, rust. So it did not rust because there was no uh, air. So why did that why did it not rust? Because so we say did not rust, did not rust. Because, because, because there was no air. You didn't rust because there was no air. Then beta, another radiative particle. The nail also did not rust. Did not rust because because there was no water. So this is the reason for the nail not rusting in both what? in both alpha and beta or in both test tube B and test tube what? C. Now, from the experiment, the last question, from the experiment, explain why oil is applied on the surface of a metal to prevent rusting. From the experiment, explain why oil is applied to the surface of the metal to prevent rusting. Why do we put oil on the surface of the uh, metal? Remember, oil and water or moisture are what are immiscible. They don't mix together. So therefore, if I have oil on the surface, water will not have direct impact with the wall, with the metal, or direct contact with what with the water, with the metal. Sorry, with the metal. So the answer to this says that. 
Uh, let's read the question again. From the experiment we have performed now, explain why oil is applied on the surface of a metal to prevent what? Rusting. We apply oil. When we apply oil, the moisture will not have direct contact with what? The metal. That's how we do that. So we apply this. The, let me see this. Why we, are, we do that? So oil is, is applied to prevent direct contact direct contact contact of water to the nail so once we do that we prevent what direct contact to the what to the nail and that is why so you see in this experiment this simple experiment the understanding is very important take this for me the understanding of the experiment is very 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 important if you understand and study it carefully the principle behind this you can answer all the subsequent questions but students get to miss most of the subsequent questions because they don't get the principle behind it so we are learning practicals in the school be careful to understand the principle don't learn just based on the diagram you have in the past question no it might be the same diagram but it might twist it or change it i'll give an example of such a thing now so this is the end of this episode of our science and we have done question one we'll do question two and the other ones and explain them into details but remember that one way by which you can pass your science as well is to always practice is to also read something and understand the principles in the science once you understand the science principle i bet you science is one of the easiest it's very fun so take note of this and uh, thank you very much for joining us in this section we are so grateful for you coming to review this you know what like this if you like this what do you do you subscribe and share for your friends to also have these wonderful lessons thank you very much for joining today's